Hi, my name is Daniel Bechtel and I'm running the technical support team here at OVOPS. So after you watched one of my other videos, I hope you could OVOPS installed and running. Now you're probably wondering, what does OVOPS exactly do? This is what today's video is about. And to get started, let me ask you a question. So you just got notified that there's a problem in your application and you need to figure out what the problem is and fix it. So what do you do? I would think that you and what most other developers probably do is that based on the information you received, you start looking and digging around. You might have a log aggregator like Splunk or Kibana, or maybe use an APM tool and start looking if you see anything related in there. And if you do see something fishy, you probably will drill down to see if you get some more details. That is where you might end up in a stack trace similar to the one you see on the screen now. So in this stack trace, you can see now the exception which was thrown. In my example, a pretty clear one, a pass exception complaining about an unpassable date. But if it's a null pointer or maybe an index out of bounds exception or a similar exception, you don't get a lot of information. Now let me show you over ops. This is the equivalent of the stack trace you just saw. We call this the automated root cause screen or simply arc. So here on the left, you see the stack trace showing you the frames over frame. As you noticed here in the middle, it also shows you your source code while you scroll through the frames. It even tells you where the exception was thrown and where it was caught. If you hover over those variables, you see the data. It's pretty cool, isn't it? A pretty cool feature is also if you integrate it over ops with your source repository like GitLab, GitHub, or Bigbucket, we can show you the actual source instead of the compiled bytecode. You can see the user who wrote the, the code, the actual commit statements, and if you drill in, you can even see the changes. Here on the right side, you see all the recorded variables available. Objects are represented in JSON format. So you can easily view it or even copy it so you can use it in your test case. And what is also a cool feature, you can search for your variable name. So you don't have to scan through all the source. By the way, we do not record any sensitive data as you can see in this variable. This is fully configurable and comes out of the box with standard settings, reducting coming information like address information, passwords, credit card numbers, etc. Coming back to our early example with the unpassable date exception, if you scroll down where the exception was thrown, you can see the value, but you can also see that the date format we try to parse is not correct. I think you can see the value of having all this information right at your fingertips, which allows you to quickly figure out what the problem is and fix it. As you know, sometimes the issue is not related to the data nor the source, but it's related to some environmental configuration or setting. We do capture that information as well. If you click here on the ENV tab, we can give you memory information, garbage collection, or environmental information. Now, what is also pretty cool is that we can show you all the log statements up to the point of the exception, depending what logging framework you use. But if you think about it, typically when you deploy to production, sometimes you limit what you log due to resources and performance constraints. You might turn logging even completely off. OverOps still captures all your logging statements. As you attach to the JVM, we still get all your logging information, independent of what you have configured for the particular environment you're running in. Oh, and while we talk about logging, if you're used to troubleshoot your issues via some log aggregators like Splunk or Kibana, we can provide you a nifty small tool here as well. We can add what we call a log link into each of the log statements written, like this one here. So when you review or troubleshoot your logs via the tools or in your actual log file, you can simply click on that link and it brings you straight back into your arc screen, which gives you everything you need to successfully troubleshoot the issue. And the best part of OOPS is you do not have to make any code changes. No more adding additional log statements to your code, hoping you're logging that correct information to determine what the problem is. No more guessing what the data looked like to be able to reproduce the issue. No more debugging deployments, just hoping that your issue will reoccur so you capture that piece of information you need to fix the problem. That's not bad. What do you think? So what else can you do with OOPS? 
when exceptions are coming in, and as we have instrumented all the methods, we actually know how you're handling exceptions in your code. That means we know if an exception was caught or uncaught, or if it was even swallowed. So as example, if you want to know what exceptions are occurring in your code, you can filter by uncaught, swallowed, or other exception type in our dashboard as well. It might surprise you what you will find. We also keep all types of statistical information available. For example, we know in what version the exception, the issue was introduced. We know how often it occurred in this particular time frame. In my case, the last hour, the error rate. So 100% of the time, this error failed or this, this method failed. We can also tell you in, on what server, what application, and what deployment or from which deployment this particular data set came in from. In my opinion, the most interesting piece of data you can get out of OverOps is that after you deploy a new version, you can find out what code changes did you introduce, which are causing now new problems. What I mean with that is we can determine when a new error occurred, which we have not seen before in any other version you have deployed so far. You can see that here under the CICD category, where we create automatically a new view for each version you deploy. Click on any of those views and it shows you what new events have been introduced in this version. Pretty cool. Think about when you deploy a new version to production and suddenly see a new event showing up in this view, which you have not seen in any of the pre-prod environments before. At least now you can look at them before potential issues are reported by your customers. And remember, you can use OverOps in all your environments, in all your pre-prod environments like QA, UAT, etc., but also in production. OverOps is also tightly integrated into your other tools you use in your development infrastructure, like Jenkins. The same data I just showed you, we can also use to help you make a better quality product as part of your continuous integration and continuous delivery process. You can integrate OverOps into Jenkins, as example, and configure OverOps data relevant quality gates. Based on how you configure the gates, we can make your deployments fail, for example, because we suddenly found one of those new errors we just talked about. Or any of the other quality gates we provide you, like number of critical errors. It's configurable, so you can adjust it to your needs. We also provide integration into other common tools used in CICD or development, like Jira, or static analysis tools like SonarCube. But that's it for today. I hope that gives you a much better idea what you can do with OverOps. If you have questions, let us know or simply go and try us out. The link for that is in the description of this video. Thank you.